everyone. This is Steven here to talk to you um, about uh, a group of villains from Spider-Man and ex actually these are from Marvel Legends, Hasbro and Toy Biz uh, that are part of what I have in my collection. To get things started I'll start talking about um, the Vampire Morbius. This one is made by toy was made by toy biz back in the day many years back uh he had an action feature uh, since his face was made of a soft rubber uh stretchy rubber if you press a button on his back he will open his mouth and jaw really wide and expose the vampire teeth uh, he has a torn cape at the back of him and very detailed vampire hands the whole figure was made to look pretty detailed and um, the only thing that affected him after being uh, such an old figure as he is uh, is that the legs are a bit wobbly uh, when he stands so he might need a bit of a support there but in reality he's still uh, a pretty good figure that in many ways did stand up to the test of time uh, he was remade last year in 2016 uh, into a more modern version that looks like this and uh, this one was made as I said last year by Hasbro uh, he comes with a detachable cape here and the other cape would look more like a vampire bat like so so either of the capes could be uh, put at the back of him so this is Morbius, uh, the old and the new, side by side, how they look like. So aside from Morbius, who is uh, obviously one of the known enemies of Spider-Man, and Spider-Man has a very powerful group of enemies of all sorts, uh, we have another character here that would be Shocker. Shocker appeared in many comics uh, about Spider-Man, he also appeared in the... Um, uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2, he also appeared in the cartoon Spider-Man cartoon series. There is a more modern version of this figure made by Hasbro last year, but I do not have that particular one. This one that I'm showing you today is made by Toy Biz, uh, from May, at least some 10 years ago. And he belonged to a Marvel Legends by Toy Biz from Spider-Man Classics, along with the Morbius whom I already shown earlier. He had an action feature that when um, when one twists and turns uh, this little knob at the back uh, the figure would have a very slight tremor and he would uh, kind of shake a little bit em emulating his powers and also uh, he would fire two rockets from each hand by pressing the little knobs on top of his hands uh, he had a typical articulation for that time period in the waist and in the arms the head could move slightly up and down uh, he could do a split with his legs and his legs had articulation in the knees and in the feet and in the toes as well so this is the earliest version of Shocker that I have um next one would be uh Craven the Hunter. This one unfortunately is missing his crossbow and I believe uh yeah, he did have that and maybe a spear if I remember correctly. I may have misplaced them somewhere, that's why they're not present here, but in this case this one is made by Toy Biz from roughly two thousand two. In the Spider-Man Classics, he was released twice, with slightly different accessories both times and slightly different coloring of the costume. He's wearing a lion's mane as a jacket, and um, I would assume uh, when he caught a lion, his uh, biggest uh, enemy, Spider-Man, who's been trying to catch for a long time, he did have appearances in Spider-Man comics and the cartoons, and. Uh, there is a newer version of him made in Hasbro last year, but I don't have that particular one, so I wouldn't be able to compare them. So this would be the older version, 
done by toy biz again typical articulation for like most of the uh, toy biz figures in the waist and in the arms and legs and the facial expression is quite well captured I would say so this would be considered a classic version of Craven next one in line would be Sandman Sandman had numerous appearances in the comics and as being also a known enemy of Spider-Man and he even had an appearance in Spider-Man 3 with Tobey Maguire who played Spider-Man at that time and um, this would be the classic version of the Sandman although there is another version of him that was released in Hasbro just last year again unfortunately I don't have that particular one I do like this classic version anyway uh, I think he's just as good as the newer one he has different arm attachments that represent the weapons he can create since he's made of sand molecules in this case I attached that on both hands he would have two very powerful maces uh, he also has regular hands, human hands and he also has uh, attachments that look like uh, bottle axes made of sand and also clamps that are made of sand as well so they can be all interacted and changed around um, he's wearing his typical civilian costume of a green shirt and brown pants and articulation is again the usual for toy biz at that time the head going up and down uh, movements in the waist uh, movements also in the um, in the torso uh, in the uh, arms up and down uh, in the elbows and the hands and also can do a split and uh, can uh, have the articulation also in the knees and in the feet and in the toes so I believe this version is just as good even though I may not have the, the most updated version but I still like this one especially because of all these arm attachments that one can play around with so that would be Sandman. Next character we have here was never made by Toy Biz, but he did well, not made by Toy Biz in Marvel Legends. He was made in the five inch scale uh, by Toy Biz in 1990s during the Spider Man animated series toy line. Uh, but the first Marvel Legends version of him made was this one by Hasbro last year. And uh, this is Chameleon. Uh, an enemy of Spider-Man who is able to uh, change his appearance and resemble just about anyone. He came with two extra heads. One head uh, would be of a hammerhead, a, a gnome gangster who also fights Spider-Man. And he came with this uh, machine gun and yet another machine gun aside from this one. And he also came, I believe, with a, a small pistol, uh, which I may not have here. Uh, and he also came with another head which is that of J. Jonah Jameson the boss of Peter Parker so the, he the heads can be interchanged and he's wearing his civilian clothing because the chameleon usually is appearing in civilian clothing and this is his classic look the articulate the head so therefore the head can be removed and replaced with another uh, this body is also used for Tony Stark custom figures because uh, he has the ideal uh, clothes for Tony Stark if you want to make one if you guys want to make one and he has the typical articulation for the Hasbro uh, in this case there is no articulation in the toes or in the feet other than the fact that he can move the feet uh, uh, down and in this case there is no ankle pivot so that would be chameleon the last on my list would be carnage I have three versions of him uh, two are from Toy Biz, which you can see right here side by side. Uh, this one here came first in Spider-Man Classics by Toy Biz. And uh, this one came in the Fearsome Foes box set by Toy Biz a few years later. It's practically the same figure except one is more washed up in a red color and the other one is more emphasized with the black uh, color wash. Uh, the sculpt is almost exactly the same and the hands as well uh, the way the only major difference is the way the heads were painted uh, so there is quite a bit of a difference in the facial expression uh, and the way the uh, as I said the paint was uh, applied to both of them um, they're both very well done in my opinion and they have plenty of articulation for the toy biz especially in the fingers and in the hand and the palm of the hand 
uh, they can also move uh, legs, arms up and down. Uh, there is, uh, they can do a split. Uh, there is also articulation in the knees and in the ankles as well. Uh, there is no such thing as ankle pivot, at least in these older ones. But they still uh, stand to the test of time, and I think they're still pretty good uh, impersonations of Carnage. This is the more updated version of Carnage uh, from Hasbro from several months, uh, from about a year ago. And um, he looks a, a little bit more classic in look than the older version, and the articulation was taken out of the hands. Uh, he was given ankle pivot in the feet, but was taken away the articulation for the toes, if that really matters to any of you. But he also has, which the old Carnage doesn't have, he has these uh, tendrils that can be attached on his back, and some of them are sculpted on his uh, on the side of his arms and legs. He has a typical articulation for the Hasbro version of Marvel Legends, uh, pretty much the same as the old ones. The arms and legs can move, the head can move uh, up and down, and um, these uh, tendrils or tentacles they can be taken off. So there is just a hole there, and you can push it back in. And um, this this same figure was used in the same wave of the Ultimate Green Goblin build. The figure was used also to represent uh, the more newer version of Toxin character. So the same figure was used twice, except Carnage here was the chase figure of the two. So one last shot of the two Carnages, the old and the new, side by side, so that you guys can see them. And that would be the story of Carnage. Uh, I would like to then close uh, with Carnage uh, today's discussion of the Spider-Man's enemies. And I do appreciate you guys watching this video. And if you like to subscribe or uh, give me a like, that would be great. I intend to continue further with Marvel Legends in my next videos. So until then, thanks for watching and see you guys again. Bye.